of roll call first. Andrew McGee. Here. Mark Pasquella. Here. Cody Adams. Here. Philip Snowberger. Here. King, uh, Ken Kingsill. Here. We have a quorum. Okay, thank you. We will, before we move to approval of the agenda, we will have election of officers. Is there any discussion or motion? Make a motion to move to the same as they were last time. Make a second. I'll second. I'll second that. Okay, there's a motion and a second. Um, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Those. All right. We'll move on to approval of the agenda. And entertain a motion. Motion to approve the agenda. Second. Okay. Motion and second. All those in favor? Say aye. 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 Okay. We'll go ahead and look at. Oh, has everybody had a chance to look at the minutes? That's what I was going to say. Um, for October 6th. I'll make a motion to approve the October 6th meeting minutes. Second. Okay. Motion and a second to approve the minutes. All those in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed? No. All right. Minutes are approved. Are there, is there any public request to speak on topics not related to an agenda item? Seeing none in the room, none online, and then there's no presentations or unfinished business. So we'll move on to new business. Item 6A, BZA 22-011-UV Blue Beacon Truck Wash. The petitioner would like to approach the podium. Just a reminder to state your name and address. Yes, sir. Well, good evening. I'm Jerry Kittle with Innovative Engineering. Um, my address is 3961 Perry Boulevard. Um, Lawyer Jill, do you have a slideshow? Oh, okay. Thank you. Um, so tonight with me um, is Mr. Michael Jackson, uh, Jansen. Mike. Uh, excuse me, Mike. Uh, you, Michael Jackson. Uh, Isn't that cool? It's good to be uh, yeah. Okay. Right. <laughs> so, uh, Mike's with White Sound Crossing LLC, Valenti Held, and so uh, that's certainly where this project is proposed to, to be. Uh, also with me tonight with uh, Blue Beacon International is Don Booz, and so if you have questions for these two gentlemen after I kind of finish, you might want to ask them particularly about what, what we're planning. Uh, next slide, please. So, next slide, please. So, Blue Beacon is a uh, facility that specializes in washing of trailers and trucks, semis. Uh, they have about 110 different locations nationwide. Uh, they produce a, a wash system that is totally enclosed within the building, so this all happens inside their hand wash type product. Um, and so, they have other locations around Indiana, but we're excited to, to see them want to come to Whitestown Crossing uh, at our exit at 267 and 65. Um, next slide, please. So here's the location. Uh, this is here, the new interchange that I've already talked about, 267, and, and I know you, it's behind you, but 65, 267 in that particular area. To the north of this facility is Tempty Trailer Sales. Sort of to the south and to the west is the Tractor Supply Company. Obviously to the very south across the intersection of the entrance is uh, Love's Travel Stop. So uh, certainly an area that fits uh, with a use that fits in the area. The reason we're here tonight for a land use is your actual UDO doesn't really provide for a truck wash facility. Actually a wash facility is just not included in the UDO. So we're here tonight asking for uh, a use variance. Again, this is sort of to the, to backed up to the north of a trailer sales. This is an area that does see some truck traffic. I will tell you based on the information and the, and the statistics that Don has provided, this is really to serve existing clients that are already here. We don't see a lot of additional truck traffic, 
It's really to serve what's already in the area, and it becomes a use for that. Um, so that's the reason we're here. Uh, next slide, please. So I've already talked about why we, we need to consider the use variance. Uh, we sat down early on when this project came to us and, and talked to staff. We looked at some maybe what is the correct way to do this. Should we do zoning? Should we change the zoning? Again, it didn't really fit in the characteristics of the UDO as far as under a change of zoning, and that would implement spot zoning. And, and as you know, from a planning standpoint, that's not a considered preferred considered route. So we're asking for the use variance. Uh, next slide, please. So this is just some of the businesses that are already in that area. So snapshot of Weistown Crossing, obviously, uh, in general, but you also see some of the other big boxes with uh, the, that's happened and developed in the east side of 65, as well as the Perry Industrial Park to the south. Uh, so that area is just, obviously, with the, with the improvements of the intersection, that area is now available and permit to allow for uh, truck traffic and trucks in that particular area. Certainly, Blue Beacon will be a, a great asset to the community. It'll create additional jobs. We estimate about 50 new jobs. Uh, Don can talk to you about the longevity of employees <coughs> with Blue Beacon, and it will open up positions not just from staff that'll be working there, but obviously a manager staff uh, and et cetera. So, some very nice jobs being able to, to come to the market. Uh, next slide, please. Um, when I submitted for the public notice, Pimpy Trail reached out to me and asked what they could do to so show their support. They prepared a letter of support, so that letter is in your file, and I have submitted that to, to the ladies as well for, for the record. Next slide, please. This is just kind of a general schematic at this point. Um, so you see the interstate I-65 to the north. It's about 3.7 acres that this particular footprint is going to, to be uh, to the north of this site. And again, is Tempe. Uh, you have a favorable staff report in front of you. We agree and concur with the conditions that have been placed on this with this approval tonight. <clears throat> Next slide, please. Just another little bit of a, a snapshot. I know these are difficult to read on the screen. Uh, basically, it shows how traffic's going to flow in at the conceptual side of this, uh, parking for the employees, as well as the wash bays. And like I said, everything is done inside those wash bays. Uh, there was a comment in the staff report that I will address that talked about uh, not permitting truck parking to be there overnight or extended times. Uh, that is not their program. Trucks will go through the wash bay, become washed and detailed, drive out of that particular area, they'll do a check, inspection, if you will, on the truck, and then leave. So no trucks are sitting there other than the ones that are going to be through the process to buy. Next slide, please. So with that, at our conclusion, uh, again, uh, we certainly agree with staff report. We'd ask for your favorable support for that to allow us to move forward. We'll be back in front of the DPR as we file DPR through the Planning Commission. We'll work through those details uh, with site development packet, and we'll try to answer any questions you might have. Yeah. Thank you. Staff report. Good afternoon. My name is Desiree Ericos, and I'm presenting for staff um, BZA 22-011 UV Beacon Truck Wash. The applicant is requesting a use variance to permit the use of heavy vehicles slash equipment sales, rentals, and services in the general business zoning district. This includes the washing and servicing of semi-trucks. The site in question is located adjacent to Interstate 65 South at 3985 South Indianapolis Road, Whitestown. To the north, there's Interstate 65. <coughs> to the east, it's zone GB. To the south, it's Industrial 1 and GB, and to the west is GB. Um, in general businesses, there are some uses that are included that are similar, such as automobiles, automobile service light, automobile service heavy, termination stations slash service facilities for passenger systems, service stations local, and parking lots. Uh, the definition of heavy vehicle slash equipment sales at rentals and services is an establishment primarily, primarily engaged in the sales retail or servicing of semi-trucks, construction equipment, or 
and or similar industrial equipment. Um, this use is not permitted in GB. However, this use would be permitted in I-2 zoning district, subject to limitation, limitation being such as um, it can't be within 500 feet of any residential district. This proposed development is to build the truck wash and it will include uh, three wash bays, employee parking and access off Indianapolis Road. Staff is providing favorable recommendation to BZA 22-011 UV to permit the heavy vehicle slash equipment sales, rentals and services in the general business zoning district. Um, staff it believes it meets the requirements. Um, you can see those criteria in the staff report. Uh, we do impose some conditions, including limiting the number of uh, possible bays to four, that the applicant will have to seek plan commission approval for the development and any associated platting if required. And although the site is zoned GB, staff requests that the site develop <coughs> comply with I-2 zoning district lot standards, setbacks, building heights, and architectural standards and such, and that the no, no trailer uh, truck parking be permitted on site for overnight and extended stays. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, is there any public request to speak um, on this item here in the room? Online? Okay, for record, we did receive um, two comments, uh, two emailed comments on this item. Um, since there's only two, I'll go ahead and read them for the record. Um, one is from uh, Mr. Steve Hine. Um, he says, my residence is at 3905 South Indianapolis Road. So I did receive, and I'll just make a brief comment. I am reading this verbatim. So if there's, uh, if you hear me speak out of grammar, um, I'm just reading it verbatim. So I did receive the notice concerning the request for a variance to allow a blue beacon truck wash to be constructed at 3985 South Indianapolis Road, which is just south of me. I do see why a variance should be, I do not see why a variance should be granted. I believe that since there are guidelines already established, they should be upheld. I believe the town of Whitestown would be better served by a business that could better serve the residential neighborhood of that area. I have already noticed quite an increase in truck traffic on Indianapolis Road since the development happening in the area and more wear and tear on the road. I have semis roaring by my house at all hours as well as all of those trucks exiting I-65 blasting their jack brakes all day and night. Out of respect and concern for those who have made this area their home, I believe the town of Whitestown could better serve those who live and spend money in the community by limiting semi-traffic rather than encouraging it. Also, two other areas of concern would be handling the runoff contamination and also the smell from a truck wash. Livestock haulers frequently wash their trailers at these facilities. This fact alone would serve to prevent further businesses from considering locating in the area. If truckers need to have their rigs washed, there is a truck wash located a short distance to the north at State Road 32. All in all, I strongly believe that the image of the town of Whitestown would be better served by a business that could provide a service to its residences rather than a truck wash. Thanks for your consideration in this matter. And then I did also receive, or we did also receive <coughs> um, um, a comment from, emailed comment from Timpty um, which was shown up there, but I will read it for the record. Um, to whom it may concern, Tempty Inc., who owns the property immediately adjacent to the west of the property associated with the variance request, supports the variance allowance. We feel that the Blue Beacon truck wash facility would be a very complimentary business and would enhance the commerce of the area. Sincerely, Jeff Thompson, Executive Vice President, Tempty Inc. Okay. Any online? Okay, we will close the public hearing on this item and open um, this up to the board for comments or questions. Do we the, let them address any of the... Oh, I'm sorry, yes, right. yes. Uh, sorry, do you want to address the... I think the one, there was two in here that... Uh, uh, the runoff and the smell. Again, Jerry Kittle, Innovative Engineering. Um, to address the runoff, so obviously this wash is all done inside an enclosed building. Uh, it will go through treatment plant uh, before then entering finally into the sanitary sewer. There'll be you know, oil separators and such, and we'll be working with the, the town, Danny Powers, to go through that. I should also point out Blue Beacon has environmentalists on their 
payroll and through their uh, as employees. And so they'll be working with the town to make sure that is is to standards that we can work with. Uh, as far as washing the trucks out, uh, Don, would you like to come up and talk a little bit about the wash product and the type of services that you provide in that wash out? <clears throat> Uh, Don Booz, uh, Director of Real Estate, Blue Beacon, uh, 500 Graves Boulevard, Salina, Kansas. Um, the, uh, the, as far as washing out uh, cattle hauling or other livestock, we do not wash out uh, those types of vehicles. Uh, we're just not set up to handle that kind of uh, product, and usually uh, cities aren't set up in their sanitary sewer systems, so those are specialized facilities that are located elsewhere. Um, we're, what we do wash out, though, is uh, quite a bit of um, food hauling, uh, medical supplies. Uh, we've seen a tremendous increase in the need for clean inside trailers since COVID, a lot more sensitivity to the cleanliness of trailers. So um, we do a lot of that type of wash out, you know, produce vehicles, fruit vehicles, any kind of food. As I said, medical, uh, but uh, uh, even other industries now are, are uh, requiring clean trailers between shipments and loads, and we're the only national uh, truck company that can certify a clean trailer. So uh, it's been a big part of our business at our current location in uh, South Indianapolis. So primarily you're washing out the trailer, the interior of the trailer? Well, well no, we wash, the, we wash the outside of vehicles, uh, sometimes only the truck, sometimes the truck and trailer. Um, we also wash uh, motor coaches, RVs, um, construction vehicles, box trucks. Uh, um, I have a, a picture of uh, our location up in uh, um, just south of Milwaukee. We had 45 Amazon vans in line uh, to wash, uh, you know. So it's it's anything that's too big, too tall, too wide for like a tunnel, tunnel car wash. Uh, for example, uh, a dually truck can't go through a tunnel car wash. So we wash a number of those, uh, especially a lot down in Oklahoma and Texas. Uh, you know, it varies by, by location, but uh, uh, it's a manual process because the vehicles are not uniform. So there's typically six people uh, in a bay uh, that uh, wash the vehicles. If it's a dedicated, what we call washout bay for uh, trailers, if there's a lot of food service in the area, then that's a two or three person uh, operation. But um, but uh, it's again manual manual process, and uh, we're in compliance with 38 states of uh, environmental requirements and federal requirements. If, if a, a livestock truck were to pull in, how would that be handled? What's the process? Um, we have a, a, a way to get them out of line if we were to see them. Uh, and every now and then we would have somebody who, who uh, uh, but we would try and catch them early in the process. Who makes that call? Uh, whoever's on site at the time. Well, there's always, if the general manager's not there, uh, this facility would have uh, three assistant managers and then some senior supervisors, but they'd be right there. Um, the other thing, um, I also wanted to point out, we don't wash out the inside of chemical trucks. Uh, we don't know what's in there, so we aren't going to take the risk of uh, washing out anything like that nature because we don't want anything to get into the city system. But to Ken's point, you do turn away, always turn away yes. livestock trucks. Yeah. Would not wash the. Is this a, uh, sorry, is this a 24 hour facility? 24 hours. Okay. And we have one in uh, Minot, North Dakota that only operates uh, daylight hours, largely due to just cold and weather. But uh, outside of that, we're 24 hours everywhere. And with hours of service rules, uh, it's become more important to have that. Uh, we've noticed uh, truck traffic uh, starts a little earlier in the day and finishes a little earlier in the day than what it used to, just to avoid rush hour uh, periods. So looking at the site plan, what's the, I guess, the in and the out, what's the flow of traffic? The 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 further east access would be the inside. And so those are stacking lanes that come around. Okay. And so the layout right now shows the two bays on one side of what we would call our mechanical room. Those would be uh, standard wash bays. The third bay that's on the outside would be a dedicated uh, washout uh, trailer lane for us. And they have separate uh, stack lanes because they're different wait times and 
different vehicles, different needs, different um, um, labor. Different if you expand equipment, to four even. bays, pardon me. If you expand to four bays, is there a plan potentially to do that? Down Actually, there? there was initially. We were evaluating multiple uh, layouts at the time of the filing. Um, the three bays the, would be the max at this location. Do you have any plans or means or methods that you anticipate? Let's say it's a a busy day and your waiting line is backed up out to the road. I mean, do you turn trucks away to keep them keep the road? The reality is that they're professional drivers, almost all of them. Um, if it is really busy, they just won't take the time to wait. It takes 15 minutes to wash a truck. So if there's more than six or seven in line, uh, they don't tend uh, to wash. They'll, they'll go to our other location um, or uh, down the road or just won't wash that day. Again, their hours of service rules today are so restrictive, they cannot take two hours out of their day to wait in line uh, to get washed. Can you take me through uh, the usage of water again? So the, the well, there's a series of uh, chambers underground uh, that the, all the water in the bay uh, drains to the center, and it goes through initial oil sand separator, and then we have uh, multiple uh, underground chambers after that where uh, all of uh, undissolved uh, solids would would settle, uh, and then we do. Uh, uh, so the, the the final water that would go into sanitary sewer uh, would be free of all uh, undissolved solids. So then the solids are trucked away. <laughs> oh, I mean, so oh, eventually, yes. Gets... Yeah, a couple of times a year, we have to actually come in and clean out those uh, those the oils as well, or is that uh, uh, the yes. Are, are you aware of, well, the, the email remonstrance that we, that we got referenced potentially another uh, location by probably a different company on 32 up, up the highway. Do you, yeah, I'm, I'm not familiar location? with that, no. Um, we, we really are the, we're quite a bit different the, the, um, than our competitors. We'll, we'll have 60 some employees are. Our, uh, our general manager on sites uh, probably been with us 20 years, a six-figure person. We have some very nice paying jobs. So we'll have a couple million dollar payroll. Uh, it's just not the same kind of operation that uh, is likely up the road. And most of our accounts are national, so our, our customers know who who we are. They, they see our sign. They... Do you have accounts with local local entities now? Somebody mentioned Amazon earlier, Coca-Cola. You, these are current accounts. Uh, uh, customers, now. oh, well, yeah, we have several thousand accounts right, naturally, I yes. I mean local. Yeah, uh, I'd have to look at what we do. Uh, we're down on Harding Road uh, off of 465 on the south end of town. I've been there since 19, which is 2000. That's number 82 location. Um, so uh, I know they do uh, a, a lot of just the national carriers, Old Dominion. Uh, I think Tempty's a customer. Um, uh, I couldn't list them off the, the top of my head, but they're they're out there. <clears throat> And you're regularly testing the water that's coming out. And it's, yes. You have a chemist on site or at least you're sending samples back. Yeah, home. we have a whole staff of environmental people in our home office, and we're very much in tune with what's going on. Well, you just have to be today. So are you comfortable if this were to get a approval to limit this to only three wash bays? Or do you want, do you see that potential in the future? Uh, it kind of sounded like you, if you read my mind, that was going to be my question. You were I think kind of going back and forth between four and three, and you said kind of depending on the site. Yeah. Kind of narrowed you down to three. We could physically add another bay. We couldn't add another stack lane given the geometry of the layout and, and turning radius required for large vehicles. So uh, three bays would be all that we could do there. I say that unless there was some 
change in trucking and smaller vehicles that would come about that who knows what the future will hold with electric vehicles and things of that nature. If we, if there was a recommendation to change the commitment to, from four bays to three bays, would they be able to come in the future to sure. ask our variance? Yeah. Um, so they would they would just have to come and ask for a modification to that that condition, which is essentially a variance to that development standard that you would impose. Just one other point for the board: <laughs> if you look at your staff report, the staff recommendation where it says heavy vehicle slash equipment sales, rentals, and service, that is a specific use in our UDO under which we think this would be appropriate. But any motion, if you want to approve this, ought to say heavy vehicle, equipment sales, rentals, and service for the sole and limited purpose of operating a truck and trailer wash. Does that make sense? We want to make sure that um, that's what it's used for so that somebody doesn't come and buy this property before this is built and put something you're not expecting there. Does that make sense? But any other I-2 item? That... Yeah, correct. Uh, then it would just have to come back to you for your... And we don't provide other services other than washing, so... I have a question for staff when we when we're done with petitioner. All right. Um, how close is the closest residential? Because the reason I ask this is the um, you know it, it mentions in the UDO the the I two zoning allows um, this use, but under the limitation that. It, should, it, should be at least 500 feet from the nearest boundary of a residential district. So I'm curious if we are within that 500 feet or if we're beyond that 500 feet. My map is loading right now, so I'll give you an exact footage. But okay. before when I measured, it was longer than 500, and that is, again, to a residential district, so not just residential use. And I believe everything over there is zoned agriculture. Um, it's all located in sweet, unincorporated Zionsville rural service. Oh, that residential? Yes, that is not part of Whitestown. Well, my question may not be relevant anyway. Yeah, um, so the, the first of all, it's a, it's a use variance, so you can modify that condition anyway. Um, second, we're not asking to zone it I-2, but I think it's a relevant inquiry to, to determine if this is consistent with how it would be elsewhere in the community and what all are we varying. Um, the way that I would read the UDO, and I think Jill is as well, is a residential district means an area that's zoned residential, not an agricultural district where there's residential uses. And so from a, from a technical interpretation, I don't know that that, that that changes whether the UDO is appropriate. From an application, if you say, well, that's too close to other residences, that's for this board to decide um, and, and a relevant consideration for you to make. So the follow-up question to that is, do we, do we know the reasoning behind that requirement in the or that limitation in the I two district. So what's the sort of the legislative intent there? Generally for noise. Noise. Okay. So for the limitation of truck traffic. Of the of the trucks. Okay. So so your facility isn't generating any more noise generally in the act of washing trucks because it's indoors. Right. And and it's manual. So and it's manual. So it's just the trucks driving in and driving out, which is okay. All right, thank you. That answered my question. I thought you had another question before we did. Nope. Are we still look? Is she looking up? Uh, we don't need to. Are you still looking up the distance? I don't, um, so it looks like it's zoned agriculture is what I'm seeing. Or, um, and then it is less than 500. Um, I believe in our UDO, the specific language says that it can be waived by the administrator too. Um, so that would be up to staff's prerogative. If you decide to go with the I-2 limitations, staff could potentially waive that or you guys can outright say that right now if you would like. I'm satisfied with 
with the reasoning behind having that limitation and how that's applied here, I think we're okay. So I, I'm not concerned. I guess my question is how it's less than 500 significantly, or I mean, what are we talking about here? I'm seeing 238 to 240 from a residential use versus. So that's from the corner. I mean, I'm looking at the closest residential use, which, which I get that. I understand. From the house, it's about 600. Oh, 600. Okay. Because so. that house is in the far corner of the. I guess, I, I guess, you know, I'm just thinking that the other uses that are already existing and got received variances just to the north. Or it's yeah, because there's a crane rental place, a empty trailer right next door, and I don't see this um, really negatively or increasing the traffic going up Indianapolis Road because in my mind the truck's going to come off 65, go to the wash. And go right back to 65. So, that being said, I'll make a motion to approve docket BZA 22 011 UV use variance uh, beacon truck wash to permit heavy vehicle equipment sales and s rentals and service with the sole use of truck and trailer wash as well as the staff recommendations as presented. And then just also subject to the findings of fact in the staff report. And subject to the findings of fact in the staff report. Before there's a second, can I ask for an amendment to that? Sure. Number of bays to three. And limit the number of bays to three. So just to recap for the record, it's a motion to accept uh, staff's findings of fact with the conditions one, two, and three listed in the staff report, except for condition one would be limit the number of bays to three rather than four, and that this is only for truck and trailer wash use um, under the heavy vehicle equipment sales, rentals, and service uh, UDO definition. Second. So motion and a second. Any further discussion? Okay. Hearing none. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Okay. Passes 5-0. Thank you. Okay. We will move on to item 6B, BZA 22-012-BA, War Horse Storage. Fisher? Good evening, President McGee, fellow board members. Congratulations on your re-election. <laughs> Outstanding. You did what the Speaker of the House cannot do. <laughs> <laughs> Just that easy. Why don't they do that? <laughs> well, now, now, no, Andy, no, no, no. Andy, Andy, it's only been 11 ballots. <laughs> <laughs> Glad it didn't go here. My name is Andy Baroker with uh, the law firm of Fagery Drinker, Biddle & Wreath, with offices at 600 East 96th Street, Suite 600 in Indianapolis. I represent the petitioner, Warhorse Venture Partners, in this petition. With me this evening are Eric Carr, the president of Warhorse Venture Partners, and Chad Mays and Liam Sawyer, project engineers for this project with Kimley Horn. Petitioner here is seeking a development standards variance for a self-storage building to be constructed on Perryworth Road near the future Juniors Way intersection. This is to allow the maximum height of the building to be 44 feet where the mixed-use core zoning district maximum allowed height is 40 feet. The property also lies within the I-65 corridor overlay district, which permits this proposed use of self-storage. Just for a general procedural background, the Whitestown Plan Commission has approved the concept plan for this project, and the petitioner has submitted a primary plat application to the Plan Commission for approval to be heard next Monday. While Section 2.6D of the Mixed Use Development Standards limits non-residential uses to only 40 feet in height, residential uses in this district can be 45 feet, and mixed residential and non-residential uses can be up to 50 feet high. The immediately adjacent proposed multifamily apartments development will have a maximum height of 44 and a half feet, and so similar in size and scale to this project. 
Petitioner requests this variance primarily to have an architecturally significant and attractive three-story self-storage building and to screen rooftop mechanical units from adjoining properties. Granting this variance will allow the building to be constructed in harmony with the surrounding properties with varying parapet heights and to maximize the economics of the project by sizing the structure at three full floors. We have provided and staff has provided responses to the standards for evaluation of a development standards variance showing that the petitioner meets the three standards for with reasonable reasons for approving this variance. I respectfully, respectfully request the board's approval of this request and we are available for any questions on this development or the request. Thank you. Thank you. Staff report. The applicant is requesting a variance to exceed the maximum allowed height where the max is 40 feet and the proposed building height is 44 feet. They are proposing to construct an enclosed self-storage facility off of Perryworth Road. This proposed development has received concept plan approval from the Planning Commission, condition that the site go through the platting stage and resolve the building height issue. Staff is providing a favorable recommendation for docket BZA 22-012-VA. A majority of the proposed building height meets the requirements of the UDO and surrounding structures in the area have heights similar to what is being proposed. Staff finds it is important to block any mechanical equipment from public view through the use of the parapet walls. And staff finds the approval will not be injurious to the public, the surrounding area will not be affected by the variance, and the strict application of the ordinance results in practical difficulties. Okay. Thank you. Is there any public requests to speak? Anyone in the room? Anyone online? And we did not receive any comments for this, so. Um, we'll close the public hearing. Are any closing remarks you want to make? Or no, Purdue Ohio State just started, so I don't feel it. <laughs> <laughs> All right. <laughs> I will open. So you want to uh, table this until next? <laughs> <laughs> now you game's on right after. <laughs> I, will, I will open it up to the board for comments or questions. So one question I had um, on attachment D, your standards for evaluating the variance. Um, item three, um, it says this this building height is being driven by the HVAC requirements. And I've, I've been around construction quite a bit and I've, I'm having a hard time wrapping my head around what exactly that means. Okay, engineers? Exactly. All right, Chad Mays, Kim Lee Horn, 250 East 96th Street, Suite 580, Indianapolis, Indiana. Um, and speaking with the architect, I believe they have standard heights and the location for that unit needs to be above the office. And with that entrance there, the parapet needs to be higher. And I think the entrance has something to do with it. Okay. So is the only spot then on that north elevation off to the left, and that's the I only. Add that the only parapet or part of the building that is 44 feet, or or exceeds that, or is 44 feet, is the part where the office is to get right. to get that prominent. So that's the entrance, yeah. right? That's the office. Uh, there is a couple of other parapets that are 40 feet four inches, a little bit exceeding that, but but the only prominent part is the office part of the, the entire building. It's like 10 percent, maybe. That's what it's stuff. Of the entire building. Mm -hmm. So try to cover up the unit. Mm -hmm. Any other comments, questions? I entertain a motion then. Move to approve BZ A22 022 BA for horse storage, accepting findings of fact of staff. Good motion. <laughs> second. All right, there's a motion and a second. Any further discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion passes. Thank you, board. Thanks, staff. Thank you. Thanks. Enjoy the game. <laughs> all right. Um, item 6C, BZA rules and procedures amendments. Staff. So once a year, staff looks at the rules and procedures drawn 
um, legal counsel does as well. So we just want to look and see if there's anything that needs to be updated. Um, this time around, we're looking at proposing two changes. Um, one is relatively minor. It deals with who can impose the fees of the BZA. Um, your current regulations say that it's town council. Um, by state statute, it can actually be plan commission. So it makes a little bit more sense having plan commission do it because a couple members of you are on plan commission. Um, so it also expedites things. You don't have to get your approval and then town council approval. You guys can just let plan commission do it. Um, I don't think we've changed any of your fees in the past three years I've been here. So it's kind of a mute point, but a cleanup. Um, and then the second change is to remove the requirement to post a sign on the property where a variance is set to occur, and that's a form of public notice. It's not something that we have ever enforced or required, and so kind of going along with our current practices, we are looking to remove that. Um, these are your rules and procedures, so it's up to you whether or not you want to approve those changes, modify those, or anything else, um, but this will not go to town council afterwards. Do we have a program at all um, where, you know, the, you see in some communities there's a sign that says what's going on here and then call a number or even have a QR code or something. Do we, are we doing something like that or not? No. So. Right now there's nothing in place. Plan Commission just modified their rules to only require it for zone amendments. So that is something that we will be requiring for Plan Commission to do for rezones. For rezones. And so as a reminder, this will go for, if we give us a, this is a, for a favorable recommendation to town. Approval? Or no, this, this is, is our rule. Yeah, the, these sorry. are your rules, so your approvals. Yes. Sorry. <clears throat> it's the UDO I'm mixing up with. And so there's no, no legal requirement for sign, sign, notification by sign? No, the statute says that when someone gives notice for a BZA hearing, they have to do it in compliance with the rules set by the BZA. That's what the statute says. You get to set the rules. <laughs> You do have to put, you do, we do have to post, we do have to publish notice, but um, the rules in terms of who gets notice directly from the petitioner is created by this board. So some communities require everybody two properties deep. Some communities require that you don't have to give any kind of notice. It just kind of depends. Some communities require signs, some don't. And being on plan commission, I'll say we, yeah, we did keep that a rezone, a zone amendment. It would need to have a sign still. But that was the only thing. Has the issue of the sign not being there ever been brought up or raised by? We, we've never had it raised that I'm aware of by a remonstrator. I know a couple of times petitioners have said, we didn't get the signs, like to me, hey, we didn't get a sign. We're supposed to put a sign up. And we've said, well, we've never required anybody else to do that. So we're not okay. going to make you do it now. Um, but that kind of caused Jill and I to talk about, and Jill particularly, to say, why do we have this sign requirement and therefore not enforcing it? So. That's why we recommended removal. Um, if it's something that the board wants to have happen, um, it's something I suppose that we could require folks to do. It's just not, we don't have a process for a sign right now, so we'd have to, it would be adding an additional burden to staff to create that process. I'll just give my opinion from plan, plan commission and, and going through this discussion previously. I, the rezone I felt was important enough on plan commission, I, I, my opinion for BZA, I, the variances, um, I, it's not affecting the zone. I mean, right, the zoning at its core. Um, so I, I don't. You know, we're asking the questions. I guess I don't feel the need for signage for. I, I don't see. I don't see necessarily the need for it. My question was whether or not it's come up by somebody saying, "Wait a second, and trying to find some type of a, a minor flaw to, to argue. Yeah, it, that certainly be my concern as a lawyer is that somebody comes and remonstrates and then says, well, they never put a sign up. And then they right. say, well, the, the board didn't make us. And we say, yeah, we didn't make them. And the court says, I don't care, you're supposed to. And You've got to. We come right back before you again. So that's that's kind of the concern as a lawyer. Let's just get that cleaned up one way or the other. It seems to me that if we're, we've got the proper notices, that would be one place where everyone can look at all the time instead of having to drive around and try to find these. So I, I don't I don't see I'd make a motion to approve the amendments to the rules as outlined uh, within the document. Second. Okay. It's a motion and a second. Any further discussion? Okay. Hearing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? The rules and procedures are updated. And 
I don't see any other business or announcements, but do you have any? Nope, nothing today. Okay, number nine. Who to adjourn? <laughs> second. All right, motion second.